If you just can't seem to lose weight, no matter how hard you try, and always feel tired after eating certain foods, it might be due to insulin resistance. For the longest time, I thought in order to burn fat, I needed to eat fat. It wasn't until I learned the truth about insulin resistance and blood sugar that I finally got my energy back and my body to match. I'm Jill Ritchie. I'm a longevity expert with a research team, and our mission is to help 10,000 women reclaim their health and get their mojo back. If you're anything like me, you're trying hard to make sure you get all your healthy fats. I used to go into the grocery store and while shopping, grab a bag of macadamia nuts. I do a little math, only one gram of net carbs carbs per serving. I'd rip it open and snack on them while finishing my shopping. I could easily finish the whole bag right then and there, and I often did. I would say to myself, that's eight servings, so only eight grams of net carbs for the whole thing. I was super proud of myself. I was crushing low carb. When I got home to make dinner, I would open a bottle of Cabernet and have a glass or two while making dinner. So my count would go up. So eight more grams of carbs after eggs for breakfast and a giant salad for lunch, I was only at 30 carbs for the day. Go me. I was even using keto strips to track my carb intake. I really liked having the proof that I was in ketosis. But here's the thing. I was following all the rules, taking all the advice, but I woke up every morning with no energy. I could only hold it together for a few days at a time because I was always hungry. Little did I know I was insulin resistant, but I didn't know it. I always had headaches, was extremely fatigued, and my doctor told me my blood sugar was way too high, even though I was eating low carb foods. Insulin resistance in the body also causes insulin resistance in the brain, which is why Alzheimer's disease is called type three diabetes. I felt like my health was spinning out of control. I was sick of my energy crashing every time I ate carbs. Not to mention, I was also informed by my doctor that I was pre-cardiac arrest. I needed to do something about my cholesterol levels and was chronically obese. He took a deep breath and asked me, what's your plan? I felt more confused than ever. I got the memo on sugar. I'm pretty sure we all did, but clearly my sugar-free plan wasn't working for me and my longevity. But the message was still this. Insulin resistance is caused by eating too many simple sugars or carbs, same thing. Insulin resistance is caused by eating too many carbohydrates. Yes, physiologically, we know insulin resistance is caused by an excessive intake of starch and sugar. The initial insulin resistance is caused by sugar. And insulin resistance is caused by chronically elevated blood sugars. And chronically elevated blood sugars are caused by overconsumption of carbs. No carbs, no problem. But why? I wanted to know why really was this happening? And how does it all work? Now, after over a year of deep research, my team and I discovered a simple, effective solution to insulin resistance that nobody's talking about. So here's the truth about insulin resistance and blood sugar. I wish I knew this earlier. This is gonna make sense to you. I'm just gonna give you a quick overview and you're gonna get it. Normally, when you eat a meal, your body breaks down carbohydrates into glucose for energy. Glucose is absorbed through the walls of the small intestine and enters your bloodstream. Once glucose is in the bloodstream, your pancreas detects the increase in blood glucose levels and sends out insulin. Insulin is like a key that unlocks your body's cells, allowing them to absorb glucose. Once inside your cells, glucose is converted into energy for your mitochondria. Your body and your brain run on glucose. Somewhere along the line, if I ever knew this, I forgot. And I actually thought that my brain ran on ketones. So with the help of insulin, your cells pull the glucose out of your bloodstream and your blood glucose, aka blood sugar, naturally goes down. This is the way it's supposed to work. This is 100% normal. So you can see how a small spike in blood sugar is perfectly normal. It's like turning on a gas stove. First you hear the click, click, click of the igniter, and then the gas catches fire, and whoosh, you see a flare. Just like a spike in your blood sugar after a meal, but then it goes down into a slow, steady burn. And of course, your insulin follows closely behind, giving the glucose an uber ride into your cells. So this is how your body's supposed to run. But then there's insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is when your cells become resistant to insulin. Instead of allowing insulin to open the gates for glucose, your cells are blocked blocking the insulin and blocking the glucose too. So your cells are resisting insulin, turning it away at the door. And since glucose needs insulin to get in, that means the glucose can't get in either. So each cell is like a big mansion with a gate and the insulin is the Uber ride delivering glucose as the passengers. But since you're insulin resistant, it's not opening the gates. So the insulin gets 
turned away. Confused? Your pancreas makes more insulin. It's like, hey, maybe if we send more Ubers, someone will unlock the gates. Meanwhile, your cells are starving because they can't get in the glucose and your blood sugar is rising. The glucose has nowhere to go. It's just hanging out outside the gates. Now you're up to your eyeballs in both glucose or blood sugar and insulin, literally. It's just like if you tried to unlock a door, but there was gum in the lock. The million dollar question is this, what's jamming up the lock? It seemed like a quick Google search would answer this question. This is something everyone should know, right? Well, before I had a research team, that's what I did. And here's what I found. Insulin resistance is caused by too much insulin. Insulin resistance is caused by high insulin levels. So insulin resistance is caused by too much insulin for too long. Well, we all know that too much insulin is a symptom of insulin resistance since the insulin can't unlock the cells, so it has nowhere to go, but it's not the cause. So I kept looking and found what the vast majority of information online says is that high blood sugar is caused by eating too many carbs, which eventually causes insulin resistance, right? At first glance, this makes sense. Insulin resistance blocks the glucose from coming into your cells, meaning the glucose in your blood has nowhere to go, so of course you still have high blood sugar, but it still doesn't answer the question of what's jamming up the lock. It's clear that high blood sugar is a symptom of insulin resistance, but it's not the cause. So you know how glucose needs insulin to get into your cells? Well, fat is different. Just like how our bodies turn the carbohydrates in food into glucose in the blood, the fat we eat turns into fatty acids that float around in your blood too. The difference is the fatty acids don't need any special transport to get into your cells. They just walk right in. So a high fat meal means fat in your blood, which means means fat in your cells. Well, so what? First, I have to explain something to you about mitochondria. Well, we all know mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It's how your body makes energy. Specifically, your mitochondria makes energy in what's called the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is like a river flowing down the mountain where the flow of water turns turbines to generate electricity. Here, the water is actually electrons and the turbines are called complexes. You can see there's complex one, two, three, four, and finally complex five where ATP is made. ATP is energy. Here's the kicker. Fat, especially saturated fat, blocks complex three in the electron transport chain. This is a big deal. It's like putting a dam in the river so the turbine can't run or generate electricity. When the electron transport chain is blocked by saturated fat, your cell senses there's a problem. This is called overnutrition. Your mitochondria sends an overnutrition signal to the cell asking it to block glucose and the only way it can stop glucose from coming in is to stop insulin from letting in the glucose so it becomes resistant to insulin and blocks it. So this is how insulin resistance happens on a cellular level. It turns out excess fat, especially saturated fat, is the cause of insulin resistance. I had no idea. So fat is really what's jamming up the lock. It's filled up the house and closed the gates. So let's zoom out of the cell and back to the body. Why is insulin resistance such a big deal anyway? Well, since glucose can't get into your cells, it floats around in your blood and this is called hyperglycemia aka high blood sugar. Over time, hyperglycemia causes fatty liver, which I used to have, by the way. At this point in this video, you might be wondering, do I have insulin resistance? That's why I want you to take my free longevity biomarkers quiz, which includes markers for insulin resistance, so you can see how you're doing. Simply click the link in the description below and get your results for free and find out if you're in the Jill Zone, our exclusive evidence-based standards for optimal health. Again, make sure you click the link in my description box below. So after you get fatty liver, the next stage is fat in the pancreas. Remember, the pancreas is where your body makes insulin. As your pancreas becomes more and more covered in fat, its insulin-producing cells, called beta cells, start to die off. 
That means your body can't make insulin anymore. Eventually, after enough damage to the pancreas, you become an insulin dependent diabetic. Now that your body can't make insulin, you have to inject it. At the same time, since your insulin can't get into your cells, your pancreas goes into overdrive and produces a ton of extra insulin to try to force the glucose into your cells. It's like trying to open one lock with a bunch of keys at once. You remember sending extra Ubers to see if the gate will open. So again, you have extremely high levels of insulin and high blood sugar. And insulin is your fat storage hormone. Besides glucose transport, insulin's job also is to take the fat from your food to fat storage. It's a vicious cycle. Insulin resistance leads to high insulin levels in your blood, which leads to obesity, which leads to even more insulin resistance. You can't stop it by cutting out carbs, sugar, glucose. It still doesn't solve the fat problem because then there's even more fat jamming up the gates, which you know now is blocking complex three in the mitochondrial electron transport. The scary part is insulin resistance does not usually present symptoms until you get diabetes. And about one third of Americans are insulin resistant. There's not one test that tells you if you're insulin resistant, but if you have high blood sugar levels, high triglycerides, high LDL bad cholesterol, and low HDL good cholesterol, it's likely you are insulin resistant. Symptoms of insulin resistance include feeling hungry even after eating, extreme thirst, tingling sensations in your hands and feet, feeling more tired than usual, frequent infections, blurred vision, headaches, a waistline over 40 inches in men, and 30 in women, blood pressure above 130 over 80 or higher, a fasting glucose level of over 100 milligrams per deciliter, fasting triglyceride level over 150 milligrams per deciliter, HDL levels under 40 milligrams per deciliter in men, and 50 milligrams per deciliter in women. So now you might be wondering if fat is causing insulin resistance then what can I do to reverse it? You'll remember that fat doesn't need any special transport to get into our cells. It can go straight in from our bloodstream right into our cells. Fat cuts the line and gets into the party first, AKA your cells. The only way fat gets into your bloodstream is from eating fatty foods. So all those healthy fats, the avocado, macadamia nuts, the coconut oil. We're not doing me or my mitochondria any good, not to mention my waistline. That's why I was so tired, lethargic and sluggish all the time. But since the glucose couldn't get into my cells, my mitochondria were starving for energy. The reason why fat is so poorly regulated in our cells, it could just walk right in, is because our bodies are not designed to process a lot of fat. Think about it. The only fat sources we had for millions of years during our evolution was from very lean meat and occasionally some nuts, but not a whole bag from the grocery store. Guilty. The science shows that humans evolved eating 10 to 15% of our calories from fat. That's pretty low compared to the average American's 36% percent. So the proven way to reverse insulin resistance, fire up your mitochondria and get your energy back is to eat less fat. And the healthiest foods on the planet are naturally low in fat such as whole grains, legumes, fruits, and vegetables. But what about blood sugar? If you eat all those carbs, won't your blood sugar spike? Glucose spikes after a meal are a sign of a normal metabolism. And as long as you're not insulin resistant, your cells will open the gates to the insulin, which ushers in the glucose. So the natural spike in glucose and insulin go right back down when you have a normal metabolism. This is why I don't even wear a glucose monitor because the goal is not to flatten the curve. The goal is to become insulin sensitive, which allows you to fire up your metabolism and boost your energy levels, making your mitochondria happy because they're no longer starving and choking. So am I saying fat's bad and sugar's good? No. Not at all. Look, we all got the memo on sugar. Added sugar, like table sugar, has its own problems, which I can make an entire video about. For my longevity, I don't eat any added sugar, except on special occasions. With that being said, when it comes to insulin resistance, we are barking up the wrong tree. Our bodies are designed to metabolize glucose and sugar is not the cause of diabetes. In fact, a lot of sugary, carby foods 
are really high fat foods. Donuts are 49% fat. Pizza is 32% fat. Chocolate muffins are 42% fat. French fries are 45% fat. If this doesn't sound like a lot, consider lentils, bagels, pasta, French bread, apples, Blueberries, rice, potatoes, black beans, spinach, and peas are all under 10% fat. Okay, what about healthy fats? Look, I became obese on healthy fats. Here's where everyone's different. Some women can eat an avocado a day and stay trim, but personally, I gain weight easily. So the healthy fats plan just doesn't work for me. Like I said before, we evolved eating 10 to 15% fat. The Okinawans in Japan, once the longest lived populations on earth, only ate 6% of their calories from fat. So I don't worry about getting enough fat because becoming deficient in fat is more rare than unicorns. So especially during weight loss, I don't consume any high fat foods such as avocados, nuts, seeds, or oils. If I'm just maintaining my weight, I might have some on occasion, but it's much easier for me to maintain my weight loss on a low fat diet. It's better than easy, it's effortless. Now that you know the truth about insulin resistance and blood sugar, you know not to make the mistake of clogging up your cells with fat, which kept me from losing weight for years. But that's not the only mistake I made. And if you wanna save yourself the trouble on your weight loss journey, then your next step is to watch. Avoid these mistakes for weight loss over 50. Because once you know what to avoid, nothing can stop you from losing weight. See you in the next video because your health is the ultimate luxury.